Welcome back to another Dagger Hilt video. In the previous video, we worked on showing some scenarios when you have difficulties injecting dependencies. So more specifically, you can't inject an interface or inject something that implements an interface. And this kind of scenario comes up all the time. Like if you don't own a third party library, you wanna provide that as a dependency, you can't just inject it, you have to do something special. Likewise, if you have an interface that you know stubs out some functions, you implement that interface inside of a class, you can't provide that class implementation just out of the box. You can't just annotate it with add inject on the constructor and expect Dagger to know how to build it. You have to do something special. So in this video, I'm going to show you those special things that you can do. And for some of you who already have a little bit of experience with Dagger, this is gonna be, we're gonna work on um, the at provides annotation, the binds annotation and building Dagger modules and installing them into components. And I'm also gonna highlight something that I think that Hilt, the Hilt documentation doesn't do a very good job of explaining. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Hilt. I only, I've only been using it for a while, but it definitely makes using Dagger much simpler. I think the documentation is mostly really good, but in this video, I'm gonna show you something that I, I don't really like that much about it. And I think they definitely could have done a better job explaining in the documentation. So just to kind of review really quickly what we did in the previous video, we have like a couple classes here. So we have some class and it's annotated with add inject. So it's being provided as a dependency. We have some interface way down at the bottom here, which is, it just has a single function, which is being implemented in some interface implementation. We tried to, to provide this through Dagger by annotating with add inject, but we get a compile time error up here because Dagger does not know how to build this object because we're telling it it's an interface, but actually it's an implementation. It doesn't, it doesn't know how to build this. Likewise with the JSON object, this JSON object is from a third party library. It's from the retrofit converter, JSON converter library. So Dagger does not know how to build this object. So we, we, if we were to run this, if I just press the play button, I'm gonna get a compile time error saying that, hey, I don't know what this is and I don't know what this is. So now in this video, we're gonna work on providing these dependencies so that Dagger knows how to build these objects. So information on this stuff, you can find in the Hilt documentation under Hilt modules. So here's the link up here, but you can just click on the side menu here that says Hilt modules. So if you look over here, there's a couple options here. You can say inject interface instances with app binds, inject interface instances with app provides, provide, oh, that's, that's a separate thing. So these two right here, this inject interface instances with binds and then provide. So there's two kind of options here. And this is what I think the Hilt documentation does not do a good job here of because you have two options here and I'm you know even after reading through this I'm really not sure like which one to use which one to use in which scenarios and which one to which one is better which one is more performant so basically I was confused and I and I know how to use dagger I'm experienced with dagger so like what does it look like for a person who's not experienced with dagger so what I'm gonna do here is instead of just reading through the documentation and going through it with you I I've designed an example to illustrate the, the questions that I had and the questions that you probably would have encountered if you were to go through this documentation as I did. So let's go take a look at the examples and I'm gonna show you um, kind of, basically what happens here is we have, we have two methods. We can use binds or we can use provides to provide these, these dependencies. I'm going to show you the, that one of them is much simpler than the other one and works in all scenarios. And one of them is more complex and doesn't work in every scenario. So obviously I hope like me, by the end of this video, you will choose to use the one that is simpler and can be used in all scenarios because obviously that's the right choice. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the more complex way. And surprise, surprise, the more complex way is actually the way that doesn't work in all scenarios. So I think this is very strange that they even have this method. But anyway, let's go through it and later I'll, I'll talk more about it and give my thoughts on it. So let's start by building the module class and every module class gets annotated with app module. Now keep in mind, I could have gone you know to the main package directory, right click, created a new file and called this, you know whatever my module is gonna be. But just to keep things simple and keep everything in one file so I can you know easily move to different stuff and highlight different features. I'm just gonna put everything in this in this one file in main activity. So this class is going to be called, oh whoops, it needs to be an abstract class. Abstract class, I'll just call it my module. And again, remember that this is the more complex way. There's a much more simple way that we're gonna look at after this. So I'm gonna annotate this with singleton, cause why not? You don't really need to annotate it with anything. We're not, you know, if you don't wanna scope it, you don't have to, but I'm just gonna use the singleton scope just because it's the most common one that people use. 
And now we're gonna use the annotation binds. So remember we have two kind of two kind of options. We have provides, I'll just write provides up here. And we also have add binds, add binds. Those are the two options. So the first one is binds and that's the more complicated way and that's the one that we're looking at right now. So abstract function bind, you know, some dependency, I'll call it. This will take uh, some implementation as input. I'll say some interface as input. And then we want to output, or sorry, we want to, um, actually this should be implementation, some interface implementation, and we want to output some interface. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling Hilt how to build this object. So remember, if we go up here into our sum class, we have two dependencies. We have the JSON, which I'm actually gonna comment out for now because we're gonna strictly just kind of focus on, I'll actually just delete it. We're gonna focus on the interface. Remember, there's two issues here. We, we don't know how to build interface objects and we don't know how to build objects from third party libraries. So we're focusing on just the interface one for now. So right now I'm, I'm building this module and I'm telling I'm telling Hilt how to build this object. And this is what I mean by it's it's more complex. If you just look at this notation, I think it's it's weird. Like it just like, I don't know, having the abstract functions, ha having this, this is the object that it's building. I just think the notation of this is confusing, but there's some code generation that goes on behind the scenes and it does actually know how to build this object. Just keep in mind again, that this is the more complex way. I promise the simpler way is way more obvious and I don't know why that it's just not the standard out of the box. So anyway, to finish up this module, I wanna annotate this with at install in and I wanna install it into my application component. So that this is another Hilt feature. Remember when I said that there's there's different components? Um, I'll actually pull up a chart here. So here are the different Hilt components. We have you know the application component, activity retained component, activity component, and so on. And they have their respective scopes. And if you scroll down, you can uh, see the component scopes right here. Remember the singleton is the application, activity retained scope is the view model, and so on and so on. So in in Hilt, we we tell it what what component to install that module into. So because I'm installing it into the application component, we know that these dependencies are gonna exist as long as the application is alive. If I wanted to install it into the activity component, I could do that, but it's only gonna be alive as long as the activity that it lives in. In this case, we are actually injecting it into an activity, so that would be totally fine. But if I was to change this to like a fragment component and I was to try and run this, it would give me a compile time error. So anyway, let's actually change this back to application component. I'm gonna press the green, the green uh, play button up here and we're gonna run it and I'll show you that yes, Hilt does know how to build this dependency now and we're gonna be able to inject the, the sum interface implementation. All right, so there I just wanna show you on the right, the app is running and we do not get a compile time error. So that does work. We're able to build this, this uh, sum interface implementation by using this kind of weird binds uh, notation. Now uh, let's explore the different components. So like I said, if I was to change this to activity component, it would have no problem since we are injecting this into an activity. So I'm gonna run that again and I'm going to bring the finished activity onto the screen or the finished app on the screen. And whoa, look at that. We actually do get a compile time error. Now, if you look at this, think about it and see if you can figure out why we got a compile time error. I'll give you a couple seconds here. If you think that it is the scope, you are correct. This needs to be changed to activity scoped. If you're installing something into the activity component, you can't you can't scope it to the uh, as a singleton because the activity scoped objects and the activity component doesn't have any knowledge of the application component. Remember, if we take a look at the charts, I'll bring it up again. It's kind of like a, a tier system, right? So like the activity scope and the activity component doesn't know that the application component exists because it's it's higher up in the hierarchy. Whereas the application component does know about this, it does know about this, it goes downwards. So what I just tried to do there is I tried to create a dependency that was scoped to a singleton, or in other words, meant for the app component, and I tried to install it into an activity component, which is no good. So if I change the scope to activity scope and change the component to activity component, and I try running that again, we should be fine and everything should work just as we intended. And there you see, you get the app on the screen, everything's running, no compile time errors, so that's all good. Okay, so now, so now you've kind of been introduced to this um, this weird uh, binds annotation for providing dependencies that I personally don't like because I, I just don't like the notation of it. Now let me show you that not only is it complicated, but it doesn't work for all scenarios. So let's go up to the top here and I'm gonna add that JSON dependency again. So private value JSON JSON. So I'm just trying to tell it to inject this JSON object. And now I'm gonna use the same kind of, same kind of notation here for providing a JSON dependency because 
theoretically, that's the purpose of binds. It's, it's, it's to pr tell Dagger to build things that it doesn't know how to build. So I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna annotate this with, you know, at binds, at binds, and I'll do, you know, abstract function, bind JSON, and then I'm going to do the object in here. So that would mean that I would pass the JSON object, just kind of following the, the general notation that, it, that the guideline tells me to follow. So there we go. And now if I run this, I am going to get a compile time error. So there we go, there's a compile time error. The app does not run. So that's option one. Option one is the more complicated way. We're using the binds annotation. We're providing dependencies using the binds annotation. But number one, I think the notation is very complex. I don't think it's like easy to read. I don't think it's intuitive. I think it's, it's just not great is how I would describe it. And number two is it doesn't work in all scenarios. The, the main point of providing dependencies this way is to tell Dagger how to build things that it doesn't know how to build because you, you don't have access to it or it's implementing an interface or something like that. So not only is it complex, it doesn't cover all of the scenarios. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the other way, which is using app binds. And I'm gonna show you that not only is it much easier, but it can work in all scenarios. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so most things are gonna be the same here, except we want to remove abstract. We can, I'll just delete these because we'll, we'll kind of restart. So we still wanna install it into the activity component. We can also install it into the activity uh, retained component, or we can install it into the application component because those are all things that sit above the activity inside of the, the tier system that, that exists. So either way, it doesn't matter. Now let's use at provides. Well, we can do, you know, singleton just to show a scope, whatever. Now I'm gonna do at provides and then just do fun, provide the sum interface implementation. Now the dependency for sum interface implementation is what? So if we come up here and we look at sum interface implementation, actually, you know what, let's do sum, let's call this sum interface because conventionally, usually you don't add the implementation to the provides, but that's, that's not that important. So anyway, what are the dependencies for some interface implementation? Well, there isn't any. Notice there's nothing being passed as a constructor argument here. So we, don't, we know we don't have any dependencies. So I can uh, just do two backspaces there. And here I want to return uh, some interface. So notice I'm returning the interface, but now I'm going to return the actual implementation. So some interface implementation, and then just initialize that. And that is all you need to do. So you can see that this is much simpler than the binds function, I think. And if you had requirements on this dependency, you would just pass them through the constructor. So just kind of as an example, you know, maybe I had some dependency here, uh, some dependency, I'll just do like, whoops, this should be a value, private value, some dependency, and maybe this is just some string. Then all you would do is come down into your module. You can do at singleton, you know, at provides, I can do provide some string, this will return a string, and then just do return some string. So now this dependency is being provided through the module, and I can just do, you know, some string, some string, and string. And then Dagger will know where to get that from, and then where to, to use that. You know, totally, totally just as an example, obviously I'm not using this, Usually you would use that in the class that you were injected into. I just want to show you an example. Well, just to make it more clear, I guess I could do like a thing. Let's do a thing and then just add the string here just because, I don't know, why not? Just to actually use it. So anyway, you can see that this, this notation is much simpler. It's very clear like what it's doing. It's providing a dependency, where the constructor arguments are going, what object it's building. It just looks, it looks much more clear to me. So now let's do the JSON object. So singleton, you know, add provides, fun. I can just do provide JSON. I want to return, return JSON, and then just return a new JSON object. Very clear what's happening here. You know, it's, it's providing something. The function outlines what it's providing. It's returning this object. Here I am instantiating that object. Boom, there you go. So now let's run this and let's see if we get any compile time errors. All right, so there you go. We have the finished version of the app on the screen here and it compiles, there is no errors. So there you have it. Those are the two functions using app binds, app provides to provide dependencies to solve that issue of you know injecting interfaces, injecting things that you don't own from third-party libraries. And you can pretty clearly see that one is definitely more complex than the other one. It doesn't work in all scenarios. One is much simpler and does work in all scenarios. And again, I wanna say that uh, if there's anything I can say bad about Hilt, it's that this part of the documentation was not explained correctly. You know, personally right now, I don't even know like is using binds 
better for performance than using provides? I have no idea. I'm, I'm sure there must be some difference. You know, actually, if you know, comment down below because I don't know. I couldn't find anywhere in the documentation that said like binds is better or provides is better. I don't know. It just looked like they were showing me two methods to do the same thing and one worked in all scenarios and one did not. So if you know something that I don't, please comment down below. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I've basically shown you all of the really kind of bare essentials when it comes to Dagger. You can, you know everything now from doing basic constructor injection, providing dependencies for classes that you own, providing dependencies or providing things that you don't own, providing things that in, uh, use interfaces, the different scopes, the different components, how they're, how they're set up. So really like, the bare basics of Hilt is done now. And that's that's what I mean by it's it's much simpler than Dagger. There's no way I could have explained the basics of Dagger in like, what did I use, like five videos or something? And I don't think any of them are longer than 10 minutes long. So so Hilt is definitely, I get I give it a thumbs up. It is definitely simpler to use than Dagger. The Android team definitely achieved their goal of making Dagger simpler and easier to use for developers. So now for the rest of this kind of Hilt course, I'm going to work on uh, actual real examples. So I'm gonna build out some architecture, probably gonna use clean architecture. You know, we're gonna have activities, we're gonna have a fragment, fragment or two maybe, we're gonna have view models, we're gonna do constructor injection into the view models, we're gonna have, I'm not gonna use a repository, instead I'm gonna use data sources, which essentially is a repository or they are repositories. It's the same thing, you know, you'll pass your retrofit instance into the data source, you'll pass your caching, your DAO into the data source, pass those into the view models it's the same thing it's the same kind of architecture basically it's it's going to be mvvm because we don't really need mvi because it's just not going to be a big sample so it's going to be a little basic example using mvvm clean architecture and hilt just so you can see kind of everything packaged together i'm going to do like a basic network request where you hit the hit the network get some data then cache that data into the room persistence library and just show you kind of the, the most common scenarios that you're gonna run into when it comes to architecture and using dependency injection. Now, before you go, do not forget to like the video. If you don't tell YouTube that you like these videos, it does not recommend it to other developers who need help learning about Hilt. So please like the video, go down there, leave, it a, leave a comment, give me some kind of engagement. I would really appreciate it. And also don't forget to check out codingwithmitch.com where you can watch this course and many other courses. Lots of them are free even, you don't even gotta pay for it. And it'll track your progress. So like how much of a video you watch, if you watch the whole course, all that kind of good stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.